Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Voices from China, where I talk to people who live and thrive in a foreign land. And today I am joined by Melissa Smith, who has been living in China for the last 19 years, uh, holding various positions in schools, uh, running schools and owning international schools. Hey Melissa. Hi. Let's take a walk <laughs> okay. at your yeah. school. Yeah, so welcome. First, first thing I want to ask you is uh, about your title. Yeah. So your title is uh, a founding founding family representative. representative yeah. That's a bit odd. Well, so yes. Yeah. What is it? Why? Um, I think it encapsulates a little bit of what's different about us. Okay. Um, our school was actually started by a family. TLC International School. TLC. I'm not sure I mentioned the name. Yeah, okay. it's TLC. So it was started by our family. And so we really need a family member to always be walking the campus and just holding that mission and vision. So for now, that's me. Right, because the family is not here at the moment. The right. rest of the day, your mom, dad, yeah. Right. And what, uh, what do you need to do in, in this position? What's your daily tasks? So the general concept is just to kind of keep tabs on our mission, our vision, but then a lot of it is just filling gaps. Okay. Kind of like in a home, right? When the mom walks through the home, she can see the things that need to be done or haven't been done. And so I kind of just walk around and keep up with, hey, maybe we need to pay some attention to this. Okay. Or maybe let's focus on this for a while. It's like a, it's like a board member representative it is. kind of thing, right? Yeah, so I'm chairman of our board now. Ah, okay. Too. So it gives me a way to walk the campus and know what's going on. Do you and then I bring day? it to the board. I come three days a week. Three days a week, mm -hmm. okay. And um, you have a different a person for to be a principal, right? Right. A different person for right. So things. all of those titles that you're used to right. hearing, we have those. And then I just kind of oversee all of the leadership right. and keep up with the feel and the message. Now you said your family owns this school. We have a partner. That's why we're Ox TLC now. Okay, so now so you have a partner. Oxford, yeah, we have this partnership, so we share ownership, and we take care of the program. And then Oxford also partners with us with helping with a lot of local things, legal licensing, things, licensing, everything. Yeah, right. makes sense. So your family started this school, right? right. How does that happen? Usually. Uh, Americans come to China, work as teachers, they may right. go back home, they may stay here for a long time, but not opening, running a school that is not, let's say, a training center usually. Right. It, it, this was also a training center first or something In like the that. beginning, yeah. It came out of families coming to us mm -hmm. and just saying, we're looking for authentic education. You know, based on, everybody can say, we. We focus on the whole child, okay. but I think it's a little bit unusual for leaders like my mom and dad's age at that time, and they had been administrators in the U.S. to be living in China. Usually it's our generation, right? right? That's true, that's true. So it drew a little bit of attention, like, oh, we have the, they have 30, 40 years experience in education. So it was just three families. Three families. Three families came to my mom and dad and said, we really want this value-based okay. education. Can you launch that? So that wasn't their, their, their initial intention. So actually the demand was like, people they know, they maybe they taught in the training center capacity right. first. Right. And I was like, hey, we like your style. You have a lot of experience in education. Uh, why don't you yeah. make a Yeah, it was actually Dongguan University of Technology, the okay. Gongshui Yuma, okay. that invited my dad. Same okay. reason, right? Like this older gentleman mm -hmm. with a lot more experience. And so he was working in the Chinese university. Oh, wow. So that was uh, how many years ago? It's TLC. That it's... was 2002 when dad came over to work in the university. And then it was 2007 when starting the school, which was also, it worked out well because they were settled. Okay. They were used to, it wasn't like starting a new school and a new country and all of it at the same time. Right. 
and uh, a few years ago you moved to this campus, right? Uh, right, 2016. 2016, so five years ago. And uh, but you also had other endeavors, other other schools that you tried to start, right? Mm -hmm. Also under the TLC brand. Where is yeah, the start? We can go down right here. Okay, yeah. great. So um, you had something in uh, Xinjiang, Vision Hills. Yeah, we did. Uh, also TLC brand. Yeah, and also they. Too. Oh, we can go up. Actually. Okay, yeah, let's go up. And also, they, they, there was a demand for this kind of education. Yeah, we. It's always a journey, right? Like an expat situation. Yeah. Um. So we've done some consulting. My husband and I, when our children were still babies, we went out to Shenzhen and just kind of to give other international schools an idea of how to be more authentic to what you would find back home. But it really, we always end up back home here. Right. Because to have the full freedom to do what we believe we have to do for it to be the quality, okay. it's difficult then to always find that. Where are we going Wait, into now? We can go through the, here and this then the this is the auditorium and okay. also we have our pop up store. Alright, so let's walk from there and take a look and then we go down the yeah. other side, right? Yeah, sounds good. Stairs. So they're preparing for their assemblies because today's Friday. Oh, uh, okay. So they put all their props up and then they go in that door and that leads to the stage. Okay, this is just high school? Or they the have school? elementary in the morning, okay. secondary in the afternoon. So they might actually be having Oh, they're having practice. something now. Okay. <laughs> all right. It's good to see it in action. Yeah. And, they're uh, having Mandarin assembly next Friday. All right. And it's only once a year. Okay. So they're doing a lot of <sighs> And it's also connected to Children's Day. Oh, that's so what it's coming. So next Friday will be the big Mandarin assembly right. and Children's Day. So, so your family, you have five siblings. Yeah. yeah and awesome. both your parents and I, I, I guess all siblings, I mean three brothers, two sisters, you guys are all in education. Yeah. How, how does that happen? I mean, it's um, a family of educators. Yeah, I think my dad's story kind of set the stage for it because my dad was actually scouted to be a professional baseball player in high school. Huh. And he had a transition time in his life where he decided he really wanted to go more toward impacting youth. So he actually studied in university for youth outreach. But then when he got into it, he had a tough time because the school had so much influence on the children. And at that time, the schools weren't representing the kind of art that we carry. So he transitioned into education oh, just then, for that reason. And then from there, how the kid, I mean, everybody else. So then I think just because we grew up, right? We're always oh, principal's yes. kids, leaders, school leaders' kids. And then you start to realize you get these children all day, right? right? What else can you do if you want? If you have a heart to reach youth, what better way than to have them more than even their parents see them, right? right? right. So we all kind of just we all had that heart for outreach. So then it just makes sense for us too to continue in the education. And we're all we all have different aspects, right? Like my older brother has been more into athletics. My okay. two younger brothers are both head of school back in the States, one in Arizona, one in Georgia. Oh, Josh is already ahead of school? Yeah, oh, Arizona. Okay. So, and then my sister too, she stayed as a first grade teacher all okay. those years. So we all kind of have our own twist, but see the school is a great avenue. All right. The kids are coming between classes. Yeah, yeah. Let's go up. Go down? Yeah. So, okay. Now, you're, you've been in China for a very long time. Uh, working in various schools. Mm -hmm. What's your advice uh, for people that are, let's say, coming to China to teach mm -hmm. um, and or thinking about it? Yeah. What, what do you, what do you recommend coming to China as a teacher, as yeah. a professional teacher? I think that the mindset is really important. We can go this. Yeah. Sure. Um, expectation. Uh -huh. Usually is a big part of everything, right? So I think if teachers come and just give themselves a break, you know, like you're coming to a new country. Right. Um, we're, I know at Ox TLC, we're wanting to bring qualified teachers, 
but to be an excellent teacher in your home country, you usually have kind of like an orderly organized mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So to be thrown into a new country, I think it's important the teachers just give yourself a chance to adjust to this culture and country. Don't jump into everything year one. The five years time. we were out in Gui Lane, my husband and I, was just to give a place to teachers to relax, you know? Uh -huh. We have to factor in how much culture shock plays in for right. teachers. Right, right. Spoke there. So, you've been here so long with your kids now. You have two kids that are born here, I guess, right? And uh, are you planning to stay here for much longer? Do you miss America? Do you? Um, it's funny because I've been here 19 years, right? Right. But for the first time, really during COVID, when all my family was stateside and we were out in Yonkshul, it was it was kind of like the first time I experienced feeling homesick. That was an unusual feeling to me. Um, I've always just loved how in China. We could just be whoever we are, right? right? In your home country, sometimes there's so many boxes. Yes, there is less judgment here. Yes, because yes, right. it's up to me to know what my culture and country is. Right, right. Right? right. So there's a lot of freedom. Right. And I think the wholeness concept that we have at OxTLC is very much in line with looking for what has life and freedom. You want to walk back to the basketball courts? Um, yeah, you want to see or just the basketball courts? Let's just walk up. there and we can finish up there. So, so you think you, you, you may stay here for long, much longer? I see myself with, my two kids are here now. Right. Um, yeah, I see them graduating at Oxtail City. Yeah. I see them and they talk about like bringing my grandkids to see me in Yangshuo. My <laughs> mindset definitely is that- Yangshuo was small. another chapter that you yeah. have, right? right? You see kind of uh, a, a smaller retreat house, yeah. retreat house in Yangshuo, which is uh, a beautiful place to live yeah. in, right? Yeah. So this is your basketball court. Yeah. All right, Melissa. So this was great walking around your school. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for showing me around. Um, and um, well, I wish you all the luck yeah. continuing with TLC. And uh, until we see you next time, if you like this content and you found this valuable, uh, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And, and we will see you next time. Have a good day. Yeah. See ya.